The goal of this section is to familiarize you with friction and how we can perform calculations with pulling force, coefficient of friction, and weight. Let's go through a few definitions first. Friction is a force that resists the relative motion of two objects in contact. It is caused by the roughness of the surfaces in contact with one another. Friction can be a good thing in some cases. For example, without friction, your tires really don't grip the road. In winter, when there is snow or ice on the road, there is less friction, making it easier for you to lose control or not be able to stop your vehicle. If you rub your hands together, the friction causes them to heat up. Writing with a lead pencil wouldn't be possible without friction because the friction between the lead and the paper is what causes your writing to show up. Using a screwdriver it would be difficult without friction since the friction allows you to grip and turn the screwdriver. In a belt drive, without friction, the belt might fly off the pulleys. However, friction can also be a bad thing. For example, in car racing, the friction between a car and a wall can wreck the side of the car and cause it to move slower. Skin rubbing on your boots is an example where friction can give you a painful blister. In an engine, friction is a bad thing because it can wear out the engine faster, which is why we need oil and other lubricants. Air drag is an example of a friction that causes your fuel economy to de decrease. Even though friction can be a bad thing, there are ways we can reduce friction. For example, ice and snow reduce friction, although this may be considered a bad thing. Oil and grease also reduce friction between metal parts, which is why you need oil in an engine. Wheels and bearings reduce friction since they constrain the relative motion it, and reduces friction between moving parts to only the desired motion or free rotation. Graphite helps reduce friction since it acts as a dry lubricant. You can also reduce air drag by a more streamlined vehicle. Let's take a look at the types of friction moving objects encounter. Starting friction is a force that opposes the start of the motion, just like its name says. Sliding friction opposes the motion once the objects are already sliding against each other. It is very important to remember that starting friction is always greater than sliding friction. Imagine you are trying to push a heavy box across the concrete floor. It seems to take a lot more effort or force to start the box moving than it does to keep it sliding once it is moving. Since it takes more effort to start it, starting friction must be larger. One other thing to remember about friction, it is a force that always acts parallel to the surfaces in contact. In this picture, we have a box resting on the floor. We apply a force to the box, which is the pushing force, so the box moves from left to right. Friction acts parallel to the box in the floor and it opposes the motion, meaning the force arrow for friction points in the opposite direction of motion. Another force we need to talk about is the normal force. The normal force is the force of two objects that are in contact with one another exert on one another. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface. The normal force will make a little more sense once we talk about Newton's third law of motion in the next section. In the picture here, we see an arrow pointing down and an arrow pointing up. The arrow pointing down represents the force of gravity acting on the box. The force pointing up is the normal force from the box being in contact with the floor. Without the normal force acting in the opposite direction as the force of gravity or the weight force, the box would fall through the floor. If we have someone holding a doorknob, for example, the friction between your hand and the doorknob will increase as the force between the two surfaces increases. In other words, if you grab the doorknob loosely, you can't turn it to open it. As you apply more force to the knob or grip it tighter, friction causes your hand to catch on the knob and be able to turn the knob. Essentially, the more friction you have, the easier it is to turn the knob. What if we had oil or lotion on our hands? No matter how tight you grip the doorknob, you can't turn it. This is because the oil or lotion acts as a lubricant and decreases the frictional force between your hand and the knob. In the next video, we will look at the formula we will be using to solve friction-related problems.